Adventure bikes make the best motorcycles you can possibly buy. They are fast, they're dynamic, you can take two up in extreme comfort, you can travel the world, they're a tech fest, and in reality they do everything better than almost any other genre of bike. But why have I never wanted one? Why have I never dreamed about owning one? When getting into biking, I wanted something impractical that would break down all the time and destroy my bank balance. I wanted a Harley Davidson or a Triumph Rocket or some kind of Ducati Panigale. And in a sea of ruthlessly competitive adventure bikes, all incredibly competent, still for me, the thing that trumps all of that ability is style and character and soul. So, in 2019, Moto Guzzi came along and they made the very brilliant or very bold decision to try and bridge the gap between a competent adventure bike and a retro bike that was genuinely desirable. This was their aim at a first in the motorcycling market. Okay, I've pushed it down to a level just so I can show you jumping on and off the bike for the dynamics. But to give you an overview, this is 11,200 pounds. It's 850 cc. It's air cooled. It's a V twin, 76 horses, and it's 230 kilos. Now, Moto Guzzi described this bike as a retro enduro, and that makes it unique within the motorcycle market. However, I would say motorcycling is becoming a bit like the car market, where you've got so many different niches within a certain segment that it's hard to keep track. In essence, for you and I in plain English, this is a middleweight adventure bike. If we look at it from Moto Guzzi's perspective, and it's a retro enduro, we can see nods to that. So as an enduro bike, you have to be able to cover long distances off-roading with a big range. We can see from the start, you've got the Michelin Anarchy tires here, with just beautiful spoked wheels and a black rim all the way around, lovely piece of artwork. And I love this, the front fender, instead of stopping here, Moto Guzzi have added just a little bit there. So you've got a really nice high front mud guard with two circular lamps attached with the Moto Guzzi Eagle. And if you just step back for a second, Monica, overall looks and proportions of this. It's a stunningly good looking motorcycle. I'm a huge, huge fan of this. And when you look at it, for me personally, I can feel that just by the look, the feel of it, just being around it, it feels like it's been designed, crafted, created by Italian artisans. You know, this is made in, La Cita della Moto Guzzi, on the edges of Lake Como. You know, it's, it's still a small, relatively speaking, company Moto Guzzi, and you can just feel that. It feels special, just everything about it. The fuel tank, lovely design, and it's got a range of 400 kilometers, guaranteed that is, which is about 260, 270 miles. The engine, classic Moto Guzzi V twin, just jutting out like that. Oh, it's art. I continue. I'm six foot one and 80 kilos, and this is how it looks. So it's a decently accessible seat height like that. The weight is also situated, I would describe it as mid, not super low down and not ridiculously high. It's not too intimidating, but it's not the least intimidating bike I've tried. Oh, and I tell you what, stay there, Monica, I'll just turn it straight. It's 230 kilos. It's not a lightweight, and considering it's just, just an 850cc, it's not going to be something you want to rip around too quickly off-roading. And if we see the lean angle, there, you are. And one more. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's a heavy beast. Oy. Okay, just onto this side before I show you the display. High exhaust here. So, in essence, what we've got here is that enduro styling. We've got a, a long range tank capacity, which is very impressive. We've got the high front mudguard, the smoke screen, beautiful frames that's on display. Nothing's hidden here behind plastic. I love that about it. And the high exhaust as well. Okay, here's what I see. So, Lovely looking display popping up there. I can see I've done 51 MPG so far average. Not amazing, I'll be honest. Range of 264 miles. And I've already covered about 30 miles, so that's quite impressive. Now this is an Italian quirk here. To turn it on, 
push the button and then to change mode you've got road oh you actually have to push the ignition button for different modes which I've never seen before so you've got rain custom off-road sport and back to road you've got about five different modes there so one more thing I want to show you because as I said they don't hide anything on this and I really like that to take the seat off just twist it lift it up and even underneath the seat I love it when it's nicely laid out beautifully clean and simple that's a very nice under seat area I always have a look at that because I hate it when you've got some messy wires and they just hide that under the seat you've also got USB there so we are good to go touring wise and as an adventure bike it must be good for a pillion Monica before I check what did you think uh, 10 out of 10 really yeah very good I agree it's one of the most comfortable sit pillion positions I felt so I'm six foot one but still the bend in my leg so natural that's almost a right angle with these bits of exposed frame making it very comfortable just to hold on to like that plenty of space on the seat as well and if you have a top box on the back which this has space for easily that's that's all day comfort it's also not unpleasantly higher than the rider's seat as well it's a very nice place to be it the more I like it you just notice all these little features or lack of features it's a simple key you know Moto Guzzi haven't gone overboard with a tech fest or anything like that just one simple key used to turn it the grooves in the back of the mudguard the grooves on the side panel here the quality of the paint the quality of the worlds just the style of the wheels and if you come around here Monica just even the rear section looks brilliant with those aggressive tires on the back. The, the brakes are good, the engine is strong. Some may say that you need more power, but at 76 horsepower going along the motorway, it'll very comfortably pull from 85 to 95 miles an hour with no issue at all. For me personally, for the kind of rider I am that has no real interest going anything above 100 miles an hour, this will be completely fine and with two people on the back it's got more than enough grunt for two people so unless you're a complete speed freak it really is plenty gear change good suspension good ride quality good seats it's probably a little bit a little bit on the hard side overall impression i get with this bike look it's not a market leader and I think it's got no hope of being a market leader. There are going to be many, many better bikes on the market for this, but the feeling that you really do get with this bike when you're riding it is that you're riding something very special. You almost have to distance yourself and separate yourself from the market leaders within this sector and see this as something very, very different because it is. Almost completely forgot to mention, Moto Guzzi described this bike as a bike that can be a commuter, an off-roader, a tour, everything. But that weight, you do, you do start to feel that weight when you're manoeuvring it. And bear in mind, I'm a little bit above average height. So it's a tiny bit easier for me than if you're maybe a couple of inches shorter. But that, relatively speaking, high-ish weight... You can feel it when you're maneuvering it a little bit, although I would say that the turning circle is very good, so that helps. But maneuverability, it's, it's fairly high-ish centre of gravity, doesn't do it too many favours. Apart from that, though, it's, it's a genuinely nice bike to ride. I'm falling for a little bit, actually, today, and that's the truth. <laughs>
maybe I'm being a little bit harsh with the high center of gravity because it does have a significant amount of fuel there and that will raise the height. However, you still can feel that slightly raised center of gravity. But overall, even though it's not the most powerful bike in the class, it feels like a very well balanced bike. Everything is perfectly in keeping with each other. The power of the brakes, the engine performance, the suspension, the overall feel of the handling. It's a very, very nice package and it's a really pleasant bike to ride for, well, all day, a few hours at a time. But there's one problem. Much like Alfa Romeo in the car world, would you actually go out and buy a Moto Guzzi? Yeah, it's a brand that we as bikers admire, but would you put your money where your mouth is? Yesterday, I decided to do an Instagram poll to find out. I asked anyone, Moto Guzzi owners or not, do you class Moto Guzzi as reliable or do you think of Moto Guzzi as reliable? And we've got two friends here, hello. <laughs> That's just the most perfect timing, isn't it? <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Oh, no, I love them, I love them. <laughs> Have a good day. Bye bye. Go on, Jesse. Go on. <laughs> oh, you want to stay? Will you keep that or cut it? Oh, we've got to keep a bit of it. Yeah. So I did a poll. I did two polls. One was on um, anyone, Moto Guzzi owners or not. Do you class, do you feel Moto Guzzi are a reliable brand? 60 Six percent. That's sixty-six percent of people said that they see Moto Guzzi as a reliable brand. And then I asked Moto Guzzi owners, past and present, was your Moto Guzzi reliable? Sixty-seven percent of Moto Guzzi owners said that their Moto Guzzis were reliable. So it seems that the common public perception of Moto Guzzi's and reliability seems to be exactly in line with actual Moto Guzzi owners past and present for their motorbikes actually being reliable. So I would say, unfortunately, that's fairly inconclusive. I can't give you a definite answer that these are definitely more reliable than you think they are. If we look at Moto Guzzi, the V85 TT compared to its two big, big rivals, the big boys in the middleweight adventure segment. You've got the BMW GS850 and you've got the KTM 890. This does not compete anywhere at all with those. They're both more powerful. The KTM is much, much lighter. The BMW is about a thousand pounds less than this. And of course, I've never ridden it, but I don't need to ride it to know that it will be a far superior motorbike. Interestingly, on the Moto Guzzi website, the prices are usually £11,200 for one of these. They have recently lowered the prices of all of the Moto Guzzi V85 TTs from 11200 down to about 10450 The interesting thing about that, this is the only bike in the Moto Guzzi range that they've lowered the price for. When this first came out, it was doing surprisingly well sales-wise, but I think as time progresses, this may be an okay seller, but it certainly will not set the world alight. You have to have a very specific taste to go out and actually buy one of these. forgot to show you the exhaust sound. It really comes alive at around about 3,000 revs and you get a beautiful grunty burble just pouring through the pipes. Have a listen to this. OK, 
Okay, that's disappointing. Let me be honest. <laughs> There's nothing there. You have to get it to, and take my word for it. You have to get it to about three or four thousand revs. There it sounds subdued, but believe me, there's a characterful animal that comes out at about three thousand revs. Look, I think, and I'm absolutely certain about this, Moto Guzzi have done it. They have successfully bridged the gap between a capable adventure bike and a genuinely desirable retro adventure bike or a retro modern classic motorcycle. They've bridged the gap, combined them, and I think they've done a very, very good job with this. I actually would go as far as to say I absolutely love this bike. If I can just get passionate for a second. I love the looks of it. I love the character. I love the way it makes the, the mirrors vibrate as you're riding along at 4,000 revs. I, I love the proportions. I just love the fact it's so exposed everywhere. Have a look at this, Monica. I love the fact the engine is jutting out like that and then the frame comes out at that side. Almost everything about this bike I love. And as the day goes on, I just find myself just standing and looking at it. It's a stunningly good looking machine. Desirability level for this, for a lover of modern classic bikes, for me, off the scale. I'll tell you something, because in my eyes, this bike's a success, but you have to understand something. I was talking about a week ago to an American motorcycle collector, and in his collection, he's got a couple of Moto Guzzi's, and he said, Freddie, you need to understand something about Moto Guzzi because Moto Guzzi is not like other motorcycle manufacturers. Example, when you go into a Triumph, a BMW, a Yamaha dealership, you'll very much feel like the dealer is lucky to have your custom. They're the lucky ones and they'll do anything they can to get your custom. You go and buy a Moto Guzzi and it's the other way around. Moto Guzzi have the feeling that you're the lucky one. <laughs> The, the buyer is the lucky one to be able to go out and buy a Moto Guzzi. It's a privilege to own a Moto Guzzi. And he said, Freddie, when you understand that, everything else makes sense. If you're the kind of rider that end up at the end of a long day's ride, you would rather sip a Negroni in a sophisticated bar over slumming it in a campsite, for example. And if you'd prefer to head off to a local art gallery over finding your nearest one pound a pint pub, then that means you will be a rider of exquisite taste. And this will be the perfect bike for you. Thank you so much everyone for coming on. Let me know, would you, would you pull the trigger, go out and buy a V85 TT? I've got one final glorious hour left and genuinely, it'll be hard letting it go. Thanks everyone, have a good week.